Good evening, Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up for this Thursday and we are now at the 21st of February, 2021, about 6.20 p.m. and I have a question for all of you, two of them actually. First one, are you cold enough? It's cold. They just announced today that the high uh, Sunday in Chicago will be five, five. And then uh, can you imagine what the lows are? This is without wind chill. And we're not gonna be getting away from temperatures that cross 20 for a week or so. So this, this cold weather is here to stay. The other thing I have to ask you, if, if you like what I'm doing here, do me a favor on YouTube, give it a, I like it, you know. It doesn't hurt you, it costs nothing but it helps me to get to other people as well. All right, so where are we? Well, we're in a little bit of a stall right now. We go up and make highs, and then we give a little back in the stock market, and we come up again. President Biden came out and said that he is hopeful now that there will be enough vaccines by the end of April to give everybody in America a shot. That is a bold statement, and I certainly hope he's right. Bad news, we're seeing the South African uh, strain of the virus spread. We got uh, our first cases in Illinois today. So I don't know what that means or doesn't mean, but uh, there's plenty of people that are very nervous about it. On the energies, you know, you've had a pretty big run and the market is hung in with that upper Bollinger Band, but it's due to roll a little bit on it. Keep your eye on the bonds and the notes, especially the two-year note. That two-year note cracked a tenth of a percent. Is it going to zero? or under it, gotta keep your eye on it. That's the very short end of the market. Uh, there's, there's, how do I put it? There's a lot of money that the Treasury Department, US Treasury has to put back into the banking system. And as they do that now, and everybody knows it's coming, it throws a lot of money there and the rates start dropping. Nobody's gonna bid for that money. Well, it just keeps coming. What is the Fed gonna do about it? Because I don't think the Fed wants to see it go to zero, so I'm not sure. But just alert you, that's what I try to do here, give you ideas of different things. Metal's fairly flat right now. The dollar just marking time. It fell down hard yesterday. Didn't recoup any of that. So let's go to the charts. When we look at the S&P 500 for the week so far, and we're already in the Friday trade, we're up 30 points or 0.77%. And a new all-time high. Come on, you can't knock it. You know, people ask me, what was, what's the best venture, the business to go into? I guess it's if you had money, your money's making you money. That's the best business, right? And it's done it. I mean, those that have over this 10 year period have a lot more. All right, daily bar chart. You've broken out straight on up. So where are we? Well, very important right here. As you can see the swing line, we have a low that is under that one and a high over that. We had an inside day today that could set up the pattern of higher lows. Should the market get over Thursday's high and then reverse back under the low of Thursday, that could be a bit of a bearish pattern in the marketplace. So I'd be watching that. What's the most bullish thing that can happen in the chart? The most bullish thing, at least I think it would be, is if you could take out 39.28 and a half, because that would then take out the high of an outside day down, which we saw on Wednesday's trade. I would then call that a bear trap. Bear traps lead to prices that could go higher. Now where? It's not a moving average because the market is over the 18, the 100, and the 200. That leaves the Bollinger Band. And that Bollinger Band would be, if it goes there, 39.59. Where would I be wrong if you get over that 39.28 and a half? I'd be wrong if you got back under Wednesday's low. That simple. So as long as you get over, I'd still be looking for that number. What about momentum? You're fully embedded. I mean, it, it's as bullish as you can get because what happens is when you embed all those other niceties on the chart, the swing lines and all that stuff, it takes a back seat to this. Until you lose the embedded reading, I contend these pullbacks are where the pros are stepping in and buying the market, looking for higher prices. Admittedly, you've had a vertical price rise. As I'm doing right now, when I say now, I swear to you, right now, 
I am doing my enhanced Bollinger Band Slow Stochastic course. This is for people ideally that have taken our regular charting course, but if you're a, a somebody that is very familiar with Slow Stochastics, Bollinger Bands, you like the way I do it, it's going to be right up your alley. Uh, I've already written all the rules for the buy side. The sell side rules, I'll just flip around. I've already given those to my uh, IT department, so they'll pretty them up. Then I start the PowerPoint, so it goes in with the video presentation, which I'll shoot over the next week. So I'm gonna have this ready to go very quickly, all right? Certainly in the month of February, it takes something to stop that. You'll hear about it, you'll hear the pricing of it and what it is, no, it's not free. All right. So you could get that pattern. Where would the support come in if you broke down through that number? Well, back at 38.41. Uh, the NASDAQ, the pattern here is different. You have the higher lows, higher highs, so that's bullish, but you end up with the same pattern on that outside day down from Wednesday. You have not taken it out yet. If you do, I still think the upper Bollinger Band's a target, not getting back under this number. Those are all the niceties, repeating it. This rules the day. And yes, I do think the pros were in buying the market today. In the Dow, the market again, the market pulled back. I think the pros were there, higher lows, higher highs. But this was my least favorite buy. If you have my morning subscriber video, I, I talked about that. Why? Well, let's go back and get to Thursday. Both numbers over 80. Both over 80 the day before, both not over 80 on Tuesday. You got one of the numbers at 79. So the embedding took place on Wednesday, both over, Thursday. You need it to do it today. Do you buy ahead of it embedding? No, that's what I teach. Wait for it to embed. You trade after the fact, not in front of it. Oh, it's gonna embed, sure it is. You, you really know what's gonna happen from now 6.20 until four tomorrow afternoon. Sure you do. So. Higher lows, higher highs, the potential there to embed, target if it does, still the 31,722 level. I'm not used to saying these big numbers. In the Russell, fully embedded reading, it's been that way. You pulled back, you got today. I still think the pros were in there buying. The resistance is 23.26 and a half. This market, even if it went up and took out that outside day down, because then you'd be over the Bollinger Band potentially. It'll probably be a little higher than that, maybe 10 points higher. You'll be in that general resistance area. In the VIX, we had a bounce, and that's about it. What about embedding here? Well, take a look. Both numbers were under 20. Both under 20, both under 20, even the day before. You got a fully embedded reading. This was the sell day. For the pros, we'll see if the market continues down. If it loses the embedded reading, I'd look for the 18-day average. If it doesn't, I look for lower prices. Do you notice that I caught myself and I didn't say the lower Bollinger Band? There's a reason why. I'm more than aware this market hasn't hit that lower Bollinger Band. Let me turn over here for you. You got to go back here to September of last year. So that's a lot to ask out of the market. So I'm not looking for that. You have to look for another set of numbers, which are probably the window envelopes, just to be aware of that. In the T-bond market, we have the swing line up with higher highs, higher lows, but it's under the 18-day average. So I have the fight going on of the bias down, the swing line up, we ended a vertical decline, you're getting a bounce in the market, that's all it amounts to, in a very oversold condition. In the T-note market, when you came down and oversold and you set the swing line up, you went right to that line in the sand number and stopped. Now you gotta see what the next setup is gonna be. There is none that I see here. In the dollar index, the ideal thing is to take out the lows of today, of Wednesday, of 90, 23 and a half, and you'd have lower, high, lower, and low. Problem is you're already oversold. So for me to get another leg to the downside, realistically, I'd have to get an embedded reading out of it. I'm only looking for the market another 40 points on this. It's already come from 91.60. That would be 89.88, and you're already hit 90.23. So I'm not bullish. I'm just wondering how much downside there is before the market either consolidates or something else out of that. And I'm still disappointed in the euro. 
okay? I'm, what the euro's done is it doesn't get over this high. You need it to get over that high to end this leg. So far, it's a bounce that, if you will, took away the bias. The bias is up, but the swing line is still down. And if the swing line can turn down again, just by closing under the 18-day average, you're back in a bearish pattern. After a market has given you a bounce, you could get another break into this zone, back to that 119, 120 area. In the British pound, you were two days over the upper Bollinger Band. You rolled yesterday, which is today, and you're still rolling. Do we have an embedded reading? So, both numbers we can't count tonight. Let's go to Thursday, both over 80 both over 80, not both over 80. You need to get through today. Always learn to count on those slow stochastics. You do nothing. Bitcoin, riding the upper Bollinger Band, is it embedding? Okay, so both over 80 on the close today. Remember, it doesn't, uh, I'm sorry, it's open tonight, you can't count that, that's what I meant. On the close, both over 80. My brain again, too fast for what I'm thinking, not the day before. Now you're just overbought, riding it, uh, playing with it, get over the band, come back under, get back over, back under. $50,000, monster number, and more companies are joining in. I think it was today I saw, uh, was it? MasterCard, and there was one other big one that's joining in, and now I'm hearing uh, Twitter and Uber, there's, there's other companies that are looking at this as well. Okay, are they all looking at it at a top? I'm a little nervous about that. Suddenly they all woke up to a $50,000 Bitcoin now. Where were they at 6000 and 8000 They didn't believe in it to a, to a company. i not saying that it's topping, I am just asking. I've been around this tulip thing in my life and I am not, don't get mad at me, I'm not saying this is a tulip. I'm saying when all the Johnny come lately's come to a party, that's it. The other side of the equation, maybe these are the early on entrance uh, people. Yeah, because most people aren't agreeing with that. Maybe this is where from the Elon Musk, he brings the other big boys in and now the other part of the herd follows, making the calls of couple hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin, a possibility. I frankly don't know. I'm a chartist. As a chartist, this market is bullish, overbought in a resistance zone. That's where I'll leave it. Don't want to get into in the politics of cryptocurrencies in any manner. You win. In the Brent versus WTI crude, you've got the momentum. We noticed it the other day that the market started from here, picking up, and this was Wednesday, got over that number. If it didn't pull right back, because that's the resistance, if it stays over, it means Brent's going to gain on WTI. And that seems to be what's going on. Now, if you're looking at all the forecasts that are coming out, OPEC came out with a lot of forecasts today. And I covered that in my written report. Remember, I do a written research report that's like Reader's Digest. I make it really easy to read, but I'll hit you with the key commodity things people are looking at. And I save you hours of reading, give you a quick summation, and then we go right into the charts. That's what I call a good research report. You don't write reports today the way you used to. You can use video like I do to get those things done, but you need the writing to lead you into what I'm gonna talk about. In any case, uh, we're gonna be producing, I think, more oil. I think tomorrow you're gonna look at more rigs. Why not? The prices keep going up. And as long as they keep going up, where are you? In Brent, you're sitting here at $60 a barrel. That's a high price. And if you looked at OPEC, they're, they're not talking really increasing production by big numbers for this year. Yet the demand out of the EIA forecast says that will grow as long as this COVID issue, these vaccines get out there and people feel good about it. You have an embedded reading, it's bullish, the trade is still buying this. It's a huge vertical move. I cover vertical moves and how to play them in my new enhanced course with this. So that's something that I have not taught before, but uh, I'm teaching it now in the, in the new edition when it comes out. In the heating oil, you still have the embedded reading. That market looks good. Guess which market got weak and is in trouble? Unison? No, it's not nat gas. It's gasoline. Interesting, but it's cold out there right now. So even though you're backing off, you're still gonna have demand in that market. And in that gas, well, I'm not impressed. I've gotta tell you, if this is all you can do 
with the coldest February, I know in Chicago, this is the coldest February we've had since uh, in five or six years and the most snow. In the month of February in Chicago, we've had two feet of snow. I just heard that statistic in the local news today. What do I know it? I know I've been out there shoveling, which I guess I need the exercise, but you're still in an uptrend, too overbought to buy. I tell clients, hey, it's better off doing other things. And some of those other things are reading. You know, if you're looking for strategies, you always got to go through the new ones, the older ones, uh, the ones that have stood test of time. A lot of that's here with our good friends at Modern Trader, which is Futures Magazine. They've put together, and this is what this covers. Now, the neat part is how they cover it. What always has impressed me is their ability to write to you, not write to some guy that's a quant person, if you will, a mathematician, that I couldn't even sit at the dinner table with him. I have no idea what he's talking about. This puts the graphs together in a way that you, you can read with it. You get the examples. You see what a base pattern is. You know that I use base and top patterns out of uh, when the Bollinger Bands narrow and expand. 10 successful rules, they say, or rules that successful traders follow. I'll let you figure that one out. How do you get it? It's all free. Just go to our website on the bottom right. Free offers are right there. Give it a click, sign up for whatever you'd want. If you call my staff, they'll have, while you're on the phone, it'll end up in your mailbox. <laughs> they can do it that fast. But all you need to do is get hold of us. I'm Ira, click that if you like this, and I will see you all tomorrow.